hearing just that uh, the coaching staff um, got learned something maybe about DeAndre that they hadn't had a chance to evaluate in a game just because he hadn't had that many carries. Did was there anything that you saw from him that you didn't you know already know or didn't hadn't already seen in practice just with the sort of load that he took? You know, sometimes I think players know uh, players better. You know, we spend so much time around each other, especially outside the building. Um, you know, DeAndre and I, I know. You know, he's from Houston. You know, um, you know anyone who played high school football there is pretty good. You know, uh, you know he runs hard. Uh, he's always in shape. You know, I remember when Jalen uh, tried to juke and then uh, got his ankle caught up. Uh, I looked at DeAndre. I said, "Well, good thing you're in, con- you know, in good shape. You know, because you're about to get all the carries." And uh, and we both laughed. And he, it, it wasn't like a, oh man. You know, it was like, yeah. I mean, it's just what he does. And so. Like I've said, we have three starting running backs, you know. Uh, all three can start and play heavy loads. Um, and DeAndre's shown that over his career, you know, in spurts when he's, when he's been needed, he's been able to show up and be productive. And there's something that he's pretty good within 15 yards of the goal line. It's happened a couple times this year and I think once in 16 and yep. a, a couple different times where he's just a tough runner in those types of environments. Like, what do you think kind of makes him yeah. impactful, even though he's not the biggest dude, but yeah. he still finds a way to get in? He's super strong, you know, very strong. He's got great balance. You know, I say it all the time about him, but he reminds me a lot of Dominic Davis, that balance. You hit him and you, you rarely see him just get hit really good to where, you know, he loses his feet. You know, it has to be someone that he doesn't see, you know, uh, really good at, you know, maneuvering. Uh, you know, he's also He's not a six foot three guy, you know, so he can hide behind the line and, you know, kind of ride that wave, so to speak. So, um, you know, he's always had a nose for the end zone, whether it's in the, you know, uh, running the ball or pass game. You know, he's caught a few touchdowns close down there before. So uh, he just has a good feel uh, finding the end zone. And I think it's just when you find someone that's hungry, you know, he's getting a shot, right? And every time he gets the ball, you know, his number called that close, it's like, you know, I better go run this thing in before they call something else. Marshawn obviously mentored both him and Jalen when he was here. What, what are your thoughts on, uh, on Marshawn coming back for a little cameo? I love Marshawn. You know, uh, I wish it was with us. Uh, you know, I miss that guy. But uh, it's it's good to see him back. Uh, he's a football player. You know, that's you know he's he's an awesome guy. He's a great friend, great teammate. Has some funny conversations with him, especially this year. Uh, we I didn't know he was going to come back and play football. Uh, talking to him, but he's back. And that's that's a good thing for football. You saw him come back after a year off of quote unquote retirement. Were you surprised at all in any way, shape, or form? Or are you like, yeah, that's the one guy that can do this? I'm not surprised. People don't know how hard he's been working. You know, uh, he, he's been he's been working really hard to get ready. You know, just in case. You know, uh, you know he he wasn't done playing football. You know, I I, I, <laughs> I never forget when that whole retirement thing came out. I called him. It's like, bro, you retiring? He said, first I heard about it, you know. Uh, you know, so, you know, we know how those things go. People usually create stories and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, I think we know a thing or two about that. On the subject of, of people creating stories, the narrative is that you can't win in a cold weather game. And yeah. I know you said earlier this year you like playing in cold weather. Right, Oli said, hey, look, he practices fine. Everything <laughs> is fine. It's just circumstances. Yep. But when you still hear people say that, does that bother you at this point, or are you able to tune it out? No, it used to. You know, it, it used to. But um, to, to be honest, like it, it's a team game, man. We're we're all out there. We're all dealing with it. Both teams, like, just trying to win a game. It, right. is, it doesn't bother me uh, one bit. Um, uh, the weather doesn't bother me. Uh, we just haven't won, you know. So hopefully it'll be just above 40 and we'll be good. You, you said that, kind of going back to Marshall, you said you wish it was for you guys. Does Are his fingerprints kind of still on this team a little bit? Oh, yeah. I mean, he's, you know, the guys that played with him, he's he, he's one of the most loyal people you'll ever meet, you know. So when you find someone that, that is that loyal, such a good dude, such a good teammate, uh, you know, when certain things happen this year, he he's the first person when my, my phone is ringing, it's him. You know, mm-hmm. like he's such a good friend, such a good teammate, like his imprint is left on this building, that's for sure. Hunter was targeted six times on third down, but that's not like a new thing necessarily. Yeah. What, what, generally speaking, makes him an attractive target in those situations? He just has a great feel of getting open. You know, I remember talking to Coach Sweeney, uh, uh, Dabo, his college coach, um, he called it third and Renfro, you know, <laughs> like, like, like seriously, that's like a real thing. Like he just has such a good feel, good, good knack of getting open. Like even if he's not first in the progression, 
for whatever reason, the ball just finds him, you know? Uh, and, and it's just it's just awesome to see when someone works that hard, usually good things you know happen for that person. Playoff Fisher is the way that it is. Is it good that all of those games start at the same time on Sunday so that you aren't a silly scoreboard watching and doing those kinds of things, have it on your mind? I mean, yeah, I mean, honestly, like, even this last week, I didn't know until after the game that, you know, we were still in it, you know. Um, you know I didn't, when checking scores, not, I, I try not to look up at anything, you know. Um, it just gets your mind on something you don't need to, doesn't matter at that moment, right? Uh, you know, so I, I guess it is a good thing uh, for our team. You know, uh, if anyone does, you know, see that stuff or anything like that, they can stay positive and, you know, keep their mind on the football game. Um, because if we don't win, nothing matters. You know, so we, we just got to make sure we just take care of business. So I guess uh, that that being that way, it'd be good for our team. There seemed to be a couple of uh, could have been plays with Rico on Sunday. See a guy emerging as kind of a big play. Uh, possibility of a receiver? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's funny. Uh, he catches a touchdown, showcases his speed a couple times, clearing some stuff out. And when he comes in the game, everybody starts screaming on defense. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, you know, there was, a, there was a couple times where, uh, you know, you learn things about, like, playing with a guy like that. Like, man, I could do this and then really have that. You know, it, it's kind of fun. You know, it's a, it's a different world, you know. Uh, you know, so you got to get used to it. But the more you practice with him and things like that, uh, you can see, like, oh, man, this guy, it's really a big play opportunity waiting to happen. What's your mind is on, you know, the Denver Broncos and trying to beat them. But has it crossed your mind at all that this is potentially the last game you're playing as the Oakland Raiders? No, no. Um, yeah, I'm a Raider, you know, no matter where we're at, you know. Uh, whether it's Oakland, they've been to LA before, and now we're going to go to you know Las Vegas. Um, you know we're we're Raiders, and you know 99.9% .9 of the time, you know all the Raider fans they travel where we travel. I mean everyone was down there in LA. They saw what that stadium looked like. Um, you know I, that stuff. You know you, it's crazy to say. You know it'd be weird. Uh, I might mess it up a couple of times, but we're we're Raiders. What makes that uh, Denver defense so tough to play against? They're having a great year on that side of the ball. Yeah, hey, they're having a great year. It starts up front. Um, starts with Von Miller. Starts with their pass rush. Uh, you know, their linebackers are physical, downhill, strong players. Uh, secondary, they got Pro Bowlers all over their secondary, uh, talent-wise. Um, you know, and they, they've they've put some draft picks into that spot, into those, some spots too. And so, uh, when you mix that with how good of a coach uh, they have calling the plays for them. Yeah, it's no surprise that they've had a great year. You know, I remember week one playing against them was one of the tougher defenses we faced all year. And on that same token, uh, Mile High has always been a tough place to play for everybody. Yep. Um, what's it like playing there, and what's the atmosphere like? The atmosphere is great. Very hostile. They don't like us. You know, um, shocker. You know, uh, you know when we show up, they're not very friendly. Um, you know, but I got some of my best friends from high school that live there, so they make it a little nicer.